Not only should we have the right message, but then we got to have the right methods. Watch the text. You shall be witnesses. That word witness is translated from the Greek word martyrs. M-A-R-T-U-S. Martyrs. It refers to those who bear witness to the truth. It came to be used of those who bore the ultimate witness to the truth. Of those who laid down their lives for the truth. Thus, we get the word martyr, M-A-R-T-Y-R, from this word. A martyr was the ultimate witness because a martyr was a person who actually died for what they believe. And you know what I found out? If you're willing to die for what you believe, you're going to get believed by somebody. That's why Jesus was so effective. He was willing to die for what he believed. Now, that word witness was used in Bible times the same way it's used today. It speaks of those who testify in the court of law. A witness in a trial is called upon to tell what they have seen and what they know to be true. You've seen court cases. They're sworn in. Raise your right hand. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. We, we don't want to know your ideas about it. We don't want to know your thoughts about it. We don't want to hear your opinion about the case. We don't want to hear your speculation about the case. All we want to know is what did you see? And what do you know? And God is calling his people to tell what they know and what they seem to be true. I've got a question for you. Do you know anything about Jesus Christ? Has, has, has he done anything for you? Has he opened any doors for you? Has he made any ways for you? Has he ever lifted up your bowed down head? Has he ever put joy in your tearful heart? Do you know anything about Jesus? If you know it, then you ought to testify about it. Do you know God loves you? Then you ought to tell the world. Do you know that you're saved? Then you ought to tell the world. Do you know that God still saves sinners? Then you ought to tell the world. Listen, we got some great examples in the Bible. One of them is Peter at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. When everybody heard them speaking in other languages and knew that they were unlearned and ignorant people. But, but, but they, they, they thought they were drunk with some kind of new wine. I had a Bible reading here to help me through here. Peter stood up and said, we're not drunk as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel in the last days. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. Then he went on to tell them about Jesus. He said, who you crucified? So many witnesses. Uh, Philip, who witnessed to that unit. That's Acts chapter 8. Spirit told Philip to go and join himself to this chariot. Catch up with the chariot. A unit was in that chariot. He was in town 
take care of some business for the queen. And while in town, he picked up one of those scrolls and he's reading it, but he don't understand it. And so the Holy Ghost told Philip, run and catch up with that chariot. So Philip is running and the eunuch is riding. Can you see them? They running and riding and running and riding. And Philip sees him reading and says, do you understand what you're reading? The eunuch says, how can I understand unless somebody teach me? And Philip jumps up in that chariot and teaches him about Jesus. See, we've got to be teaching about Jesus. We've got to be convicting about Jesus. So convicting like Paul was when he stood before Agrippa in Acts chapter 22 and told King Agrippa about his Damascus Road experience. And Paul was so persuasive and convincing and convicting that Agrippa said, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. Do I have a witness here? These are great witnesses. That's all the Lord wants us to do is to tell what we know. Got to have the right message. Got to have the right method. But then thirdly, we got to have the right mindset. Here it is. The witness in a court of law is to testify to the judge and the jury. The witnesses for Jesus Christ are to testify to the whole world. Now listen, 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 listen. That is a big task. And so Jesus goes on to break it down for us. Notice what he said. He says, you're going to witness to the whole world, but you're going to start close and then move out. See, most of us will never go to the uttermost part of the earth, but we can serve in our Jerusalem. What's our Jerusalem? When he said Jerusalem, he's talking about you start at home. See, we can witness to our families, to our friends, to our co-workers, to anybody we meet and anywhere we go. We're, we're always to be on mission for Jesus. Tell the lost and dying world that Jesus still saved. Now, if we get the opportunity to go to our Judeas and our Samarias and our uttermost parts, then we should make good use of those open doors and those opportunities. Every one of us, we meet people along the way and everybody we meet will fall into one or two categories. Either they're a believer or there's somebody in need of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, what's really sad is that most believers will not talk to anybody who is outside of their comfort zone. They're afraid to share the gospel outside of their realm of safety. And so, as a result, most church members are not involved in any kind of evangelism. They have the mindset, me, my four, and no more. When there's a whole world that has to be reached with the gospel of grace, and it's our job to take it to them. See, if we really believe that people are going to hell without Jesus. And if we really believe that the gospel is for all men, then why aren't we doing more to get the gospel to them? Well, why aren't we out there telling the lost world that Jesus saved? Could it be that we really 
Don't believe. Everything we claim to believe. Could it be, church, that we're saved, sanctified, and satisfied? Could it be that we've forgotten to stick to the plan? Look at our current situation. We're preaching on the internet every week. We're teaching Bible and life lessons every Wednesday. Some ministries are on TV every Sunday, and those things are good, but they do not take away your personal, individual responsibility to share the gospel with somebody. We must have the right message. We must have the right man. Gotta have the right mindset. But then as I rush to the close, if we're gonna stick to the plan, we gotta have the right muscle. Gotta have the right muscle. If, 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 if our message is gonna have any power, if my methods are gonna be successful. Yeah. And if our mindset is going to be what it ought to be, we're going to need help from a power outside of ourselves. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. In the text, Jesus tells where that power comes from. He tells us that our help comes from the Holy Ghost. The people in the upper room were promised that the Spirit of God was coming. And they were up there waiting for it. Waiting for the movement of the Holy Ghost. Waiting for power to come from above. That when that power would come, they would be filled with that power. Yes, Let me tell you something on our clothes. When that power came on that day of Pentecost, those terrified disciples who had been hiding from the Jews in fear that what had been done to Jesus would be done to them. Those scary disciples became bold preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look at Peter. That same Peter that had stepped out of the boat on the Sea of Galilee. That same Peter that had walked on the water with Jesus. And those, that same Peter that had took his eyes on Jesus and looked around and, and saw that the wind was boisterous. The Bible says he became fearful and he began to sink down in the water. So fearful that Jesus had to scold him and say, How is it that you have no faith? Have I got a witness here? Oh, but when the power came, these same disciples who had been afraid out on the water, these disciples who had been afraid out in the storm, they came out boldly to preach the good news of Jesus and his love. Have I got a witness here? That same Peter who had denied the Lord and said I don't even know him. That on Pentecost Sunday and when he opened the doors 3,000 souls came running to be saved 
is so simple. Have the right message. Have the right method. Have the right mindset. And have the right muscle. The church's muscle is the power of the Holy Ghost. See, we can't do any of this. Even of ourselves. We're, we're not smart enough. We're not intelligent enough. We're not wise enough. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said to them, you will receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Oh, and when you get that power, you'll be able to witness in Jerusalem, that's at home, and then spread to Judea, and then spread to Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Just stick to the plan. You received that word this morning? Maybe you're listening. Maybe you're watching. You don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. If you've been convinced and convicted that he is Lord, I want you to pray this prayer with me. To simply say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need your grace. I need your mercy. I need your love. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe you were buried. I believe you rose again on that third day morning. And today I want to accept you into my heart. If you pray that simple prayer, Jesus has come into your heart. It's so important to be a part of a body of Christ where you can continue to learn and grow. I know we're in, in strange times and churches really aren't meeting the way we once did. But God allowed this to happen during a time where there are so many mediums of communication. This is one of them. We're able to meet virtually. We're able to teach you virtually. We're able to communicate with you virtually. You're able to actually grow as a Christian virtually. And we want you to contact us. Hit us on our Facebook Messenger, and I promise you somebody will get in touch with you. This has been a wonderful day. Worship. I want to thank those who are here today, uh, those who plan to, to park and honk your horn, but you got here and realized that it was just so windy outside, we decided that we would come in. We tried to get as many uh, messages and communication out as possible, but you showed up and I'm glad you're here. It's good to see your faces. God bless you. Good to see your faces. I want to thank everybody who came out on yesterday to help support the fire pit explosion, which was hosted by the women's ministry. Thank you so much. We had a we had a good time. Good, I mean, people stayed right up to the end. We had to tell folks, go home, go home. It's over, it's over. We'll pick up next time. We were watching the movie, but it was just, it was getting late. It was just time to go. Thank you so much for those, Sister Janice Amen from Camden, Arkansas. God bless you, dear. God bless you, dear. Amen. Our friend who stopped by yesterday, Amen. God bless you, sir. You said you were gonna come. And, and be with us today. You are a man of your word. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Listen, if you get a chance to come by the church to pick up your church anniversary gift, 
um, listen, uh, due to such no short notice, if you didn't have a chance of talking to the people out there, if you didn't have a chance to get by, uh, then you can come by the church on Wednesday and Thursday between 10 and 4. Between 10 and 4, Miss King will meet you here at the church. We have anniversary gift bags that uh, that we're giving out today. Uh, just a little gift from the church on the church's anniversary. Amen. We want to continue to be in prayer for the McNeil, McDaniel, Mitchell, and Brown families. Uh, we funeralized Sister Coretta Honey McNeil on yesterday. Please, please, please continue to be in prayer for this family. Please, please, please be in prayer. So much has been going on this year. It's been a rough year, but God is sovereign. God is sovereign. He is sovereign. I want to remind you to please continue to be faithful to the Lord and His church by way of your tithes and your offerings, even if you're not a member. We have some people who are not members who give on a regular basis just because the ministry has been a blessing to them. Let me share with you a few ways you can give. You can go to the church website. You can give online at gsbconline.com. You can give through our church's cash app, dollar sign Gaines Street. You can text your donation to 501 209-8894 or you can mail your donation to the church at Gang Street 1601 South Gang Street Little Rock, Arkansas 72206 Listen, we're looking forward to sharing with you on Wednesday evening 6.30 we're going to continue our teaching series on From the Car Seat to the Driver's Seat the Ministry of Raising Kids. I'm looking forward to sharing the next installment of that series with you Wednesday night, 6.30, Facebook Live. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of our broadcast. We love you. God bless you. Peace.